Great, good morning, everybody. This is my final presentation. First off, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Furthermore, I acknowledge with respect that the Cornwall peoples on whose traditional territory the University of Victoria stands and the Songhees, Esquimalt and Mosaic peoples whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. There is a brief outline, well not so brief outline of my presentation. So my name is Lisa Lintot and this is my final presentation for my BA in Health and Community Services with a focus on aging. I was fortunate to have found a practicum done remotely uh, with Victoria Hospice in Victoria, BC. First off, though, I would like to talk about positionality. It is important to continually reflect upon my own positionality with respect to working with and for different communities and individuals. Identity matters, as we all carry particular types of privilege that allow us to advocate for social justice and change. I need to be open to be to thinking beyond my own worldview and how I can consistently and honestly reflect upon and incorporate my privilege in creating positive change. My practicum. Under the primary supervision of Dr. Robert Berenger, my work has been to learn about and conduct a rapid review of literature related to end of life care of LGBTQ plus older adults. The purpose of the research was to address identified needs and barriers in relation to these types of care. I was also responsible for updating the BC LGBT end of life resources uh, inventory, which is available on the SFU website or should be available. My practicum based case scenario, based on the results of the rapid review and a visit to the hospice, it was found that the hospice needed to be more inclusive. In particular, uh, well, for example, there are a lack of options to self identify on forms and a lack of affirmative imagery. Creating an inclusive space is important so these older adults can be confident that they will not be faced with stigma, isolation, and distress of the organization and have their health care needs met. On a larger scale, the practice of EDI is to help drive a greater cultural change and to address obstacles faced by traditionally marginalized populations. This practicum and case scenario related to aging as they can be considered examples of how social, political, and marginalization experiences can have a negative effect over the life course and in turn affect aging and healthcare needs. Values of focus. Interprofessional and multidisciplinary approaches. Uh, there's a need to consider the effects of collaboration within a healthcare context for the patient and population who is receiving the care. This project involved and is relevant to a diverse group of stakeholders who can have a collective impact on inclusivity of LGBTQ plus hospice and palliative care. Ultimately, the project is for LGBTQ plus older adults with the hope that change can be made to reduce stigma and inequality when accessing end of life care. The achievement of health equity requires empowering LGBTQ plus people and their allies to take action and address the environmental and structural resources and risks that influence their house, health, not house. However, if an organization isn't authentically inclusive, can it legitimately and appropriately, appropriately ensure quality care? If we can do something about circumstances that will lead to someone suffering pain, disability, or death, and we do not, we are morally culpable. The nothing about us without us perspective highlights the importance of meaningfully engaging community members in the development process. You cannot be inclusive if you do not partner with and follow the lead of the community you intend to serve. How can I ask someone to trust competency before I have shown that I have trusted theirs? Our skills of focus. Written, uh, clearly communicating in written and verbal formats is a necessary skill. Um, when working as a practicum student, and particularly when you're working remotely. Due to COVID-19, I was not able to present the rapid review uh, findings to stakeholders. However, I will be participating in the creation of an abstract and poster. I've learned about the importance of appropriate and ethical evidence-based research practice and how it can be used to provide effective care. I've also learned about how to conduct a rapid review, which is a new qualitative skill for me. And I've also had the opportunity to learn more about thematic analysis, including classes <clears throat> and the practicum have reiterated the importance of ensuring that all research related decisions need to be backed up by relevant evidence based literature. 
The burden of proof is also on other researchers. For example, we excluded articles that did not clearly describe their own methodology. <clears throat> Cultural safety involves a recognition that we are all bearers of culture and we need to be aware of and challenge unequal power relations at all levels. On a larger scale and in relation to other populations, without a cultural safety, can inclusive programming really work? The knowledge areas of focus. Um, <clears throat> health equity. The results of the rapid review have been an example of how a lack of inclusivity can negatively impact health. Social determinants of health played a role in understanding why older LGBTQ plus adults face different health care needs and barriers. In order to work towards addressing these populations' health issues, stakeholders also need to be engaged. The TRC calls to action. Uh, rural and non-reserve Indigenous communities do not have formalized palliative care programs. There is a policy gap where neither level of government takes responsibility for palliative care funding. My chosen calls to action are number threes, number three and number 20, which are related to the issue of governmental jurisdiction. It is unethical that the basic tenets of palliative care are not accessible to an Indigenous communities. To personally operationalize these calls, I will always determine if Indigenous peoples are not being included in the services system, acknowledge the territory I'm on, and further my own education in terms of Indigenous peoples' history, health, and future. Key insights. There are many, but here are three. Applying the skills, values, and areas of knowledge during the practicum was one of the best ways I've been able to integrate what I've learned. Understanding and practicing cultural safety while critically reflecting on my own positionality has been a transformative shift in my outlook, personally and professionally. Able, being able to enhance my professional development by learning how to embrace and understand what effective group is in person and virtually has been quite interesting. I've actually become quite a fan of the group charter. Uh, final thoughts. It's been a fantastic practicum experience. Uh, the, my only challenge were my own issues in communicating via email. I think I was a little bit too eager and maybe misread some emails here and there. But this BA program has been truly life-changing. There were difficult times, but those were overshadowed by the connections I've made and the knowledge I've gained and the growth I've experienced. I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Robert Berenger for being a generous, supportive, and knowledgeable practicum supervisor, Dr. Helena Dote and Annie Doe of the Victoria Hospice. Classmates and faculty, in particular, Aaron Powers and Natalie, my family and friends for being my cheerleaders, and me. I think it's important for us to give ourselves credit because we've all worked so incredibly hard. Thank you.